Dr. Yoshimura, ladies and gentlemen, good evening, and thank you for coming to the JICC's summer lecture, The Evolutionary Origin of Periodical Cicadas, a sci-fi story. I'm Masashi Mizobuchi, director of the JICC Embassy of Japan. I'm very pleased that you have joined our live story. Summer is here, and in Japan, that means cicadas. We are so used to their sound. We say, me, 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 or tsukutsukuhoshi, tsukutsukuhoshi. How do Americans describe the sound of skedas? When we think of summer, the sound of skedas is always in the background of those memories. For many Japanese people, including myself, those memories are of collecting insects when we were young, especially skedas. Pokemon was actually created by a Japanese person who was inspired by his childhood hobby of collecting insects. I know right now that the East Coast of America is in the middle of a huge emergence of skaters. While, while we get them every summer in Japan, the kind here in Washington only come out every 17 years. Tonight's legendary speaker, Dr. Jin Yoshimura, of Shizuoka University is one of the wo world leading experts on skaters, and he is responsible for solving the mystery of why these periodical skaters emerge every 17 or in some cases 13 years. He has agreed to tell us about his research tonight and he will explain it in the form of a science fiction story. Now, please enjoy tonight's sci-fi story about periodical skaters. Let us all welcome Dr. Jin Yoshimura. Okay, Dr. Yoshimura, uh, I can take your, your video and then I will uh, take your presentation when you share it. <coughs> Thank you. The... Mm. <coughs> Great, your Thank video you. is live. Alive, the, can you hear me? Yes, yeah, your audio okay. is good too. So now uh, share the presentation. Okay, so I will start the presentation. Thank you. Mm. Okay, can you see the slide? Yes, there the, you are. Okay, here. The, I talk about the origin of periodical cicadas. The, the, we say a sci-fi story, you know why we have to say sci-fi stories, but it's also science. The <coughs> periodical cicadas you hear around in Washington DC or anywhere else in East Coast is, you know, if you look, uh, if you listen to those places, then uh, it will end in maybe, you know, uh, before the uh, end of, uh, before the end of June or like, you know, July, early July, all disappears. You have to wait for another 17 years to come out. And then it's different from other cicadas common in Japan or any other world. They come out every year in the same forest, but this doesn't. So, Pericoscados is one of the uniquest insects coming out in huge numbers, like photos, and then they emerging in their time, and then very different from other cicadas. Because uh, this is in uh, suburb of Chicago, and then on the tree, they come out in the daytime, and then in huge numbers, but they're only coming every 17 years, and then nothing in between, nobody in between. So Pericoscados are distributed only in the east half of the United States. If you see, this is Florida and this is Canada, and then this is like Michigan. So Chicago is here, and then New York is somewhere here. So if you see cicadas in the only eastern half of the United States, 
nowhere in the world. This comes out like a 17 year comes out in north and 13 year comes out in south. And here says boundary, but it, it's, it's not really boundary, it's a mosaic distribution. <coughs> the northern boundary of 13 years is this, and the southern boundary of 17 years is this. So we're going to talk about those 17 and 13 year cicadas. Why it's 17 and 13? And we are wondering uh, so long, like, uh, since even Darwin talked about cicadas, and then so really in the long history of our life, the you know, when the American uh, people landed in, uh, uh, like you know, European people landed in United States, but since then they realized these cicadas coming out every 13 or every 17 years. In Massachusetts, they come out in Cape Cod and then every 17 years, but nothing in between. Oh, by the way, this is this white eyes. These are the blue, we say light blue or white eyes. That's albinos. Sometimes you know, one in uh, several thousand we can find. But they see the brood like this. They, they come out in adult and then emerges. This is fast nymph and it goes, grows to up to 17 years. So it's quite long. 17 or 13 years broods are very, very quite long. And you have to wait for long. And then we call brood because it's easier to identify which years they're coming out. The, this year is 10th brood that's coming out. So see, you know, 21, 10th brood is coming out, only 10th brood. We have no 13 year cicadas. But the, in 24, we see both brood, 13 year, 13 brood of 17 year, and 19 brood of 17 year. Then this is what we know now. The Chris Simons uh, collected all the data sets and then found, and this is tens. And then if you see, this is one of the largest with many, many dots. And then actually, like you know, estimated over like a six, seven million, uh, million, billion? No. 60, 70 million or something, like a more than human populations in just single brood. And so they are, you know, dotted in overlap, looks like overlapping in this map, but it's a, they are segregated, you know, they are different places. So if you find one forest, you find one brood, no other brood. And so we talk about this brood, but they contain many species. So we talk about, but they all share cycles. And we have known species, seven known species. We can say the largest ones, decimal groups, you know, one 17 years and two 13 year cycles. Then Cassini is the small ones with black berries has 17 and 13. Same as Decura or the same, you know, small size with skinny and with banded uh, abdomen, banded berries is also <coughs> uh, 17 and 13. Oh, you can see here, maybe, does that work? It doesn't work, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> so we have a mysteries. Why 17 and 13 year cycles? It's a prime numbers. No emergence in between. This is longest life cycles in the insects. Extreme aggregation, you see, and strong site tenacity. You know, they don't move away so much. The flying is very, very, you know, not good. <laughs> so we have those species, three clustered species. And then, uh, cicadas are generally slow life. They take 
very long life. And then uh, in the field studies, they show like uh, one of the cicadas in Japan takes about seven, eight, nine years. So originally it's, you know, close to 10 years to grow. Many cicadas are like that. And then there are many, many ideas about you know, how they evolved 17 and 13, but none of them shows why it's prime numbers. So here we make up stories. Adam and Eve of Perica Cicados, because we were thinking about the past. Past, we can never know, we can never travel past. So we just guessing. It's a science fiction. So we have four, five stages after, up to the end of the glacial period. Okay. So before the glacial period, we have the <coughs> ancestral cicadas. They are not coming out 17 or 13 year cycle. They're coming out every year. Like uh, other temporary cicadas in Japan or even in the United States, there are very few species, but still there are cicadas. You may not, you know, recognize it because their sounds are not so distinctive like Japanese cicadas. They're like a jiggy, something like a you know, noisy sound for humans. Unless you know that really cicadas, nobody identified these things. They uh, sounds like just a noise for us. But they emerge every year, juvenile, uh, slow, extremely slow growth. So takes seven, eight, ten years or something. An adult, if you sometimes hear the cicadas screaming, yay, uh, usually like, you know, some birds attack them, eat them, or some uh, squirrel attack them. They are good food for the, for the animals, for small animals. So the as you see the before, you see, you know, if you grow cicadas, they come out, you know, various years. They are not determined. Cycles, there is no definite fixed cycles because they are depending on, the, you know, how they can find the food. Food is water in the trees the water pipe, they have a water pipe going up and then nutrients goes down, but the nutrients goes down not by pipe, by, by cell by cell with the opening. But the water pipe is just real, you know, water pipe going through. And then cicadas put their mouth into water pipe to get water. So, you know, trees, water, you know, uh, pump up the waters from the soil and with very small amount of minerals. So the water pipe, waters, you know, from the trees are not nutrient, you know, very low nutrient. That's why cicadas are grow, slow, grow so, you know, cannot grow so fast. But so now we know that if you grow cicadas by Aloe plant, they grow much first. So really, but uh, it all depends. So some trees are very active to pump up the waters as much, then cicadas grow faster. But also, it's also depending on temperatures. So if the warm temperatures, trees grow faster and then cicadas grow faster. So cicadas life cycles. Life cycles, uh, like, you know, now cicadas are emerging and then singing, singing and then mating and then lay eggs. They go down to the soils, the egg hatches after three, four, five weeks later, they, the egg hatches and then go down, then come up 17 years later. This is the life cycle of Peruca cicadas. Actually, this, is, this arrow is wrong. Usually they make whole up. 
So ice age comes. You know, ice age is uh, like you know after dinosaur dies out, then it's cooling down. So everything is cooling down, and then ice comes to United States. Up, you know, ice is known to come down to Caribbean oceans. You know, no. So really, United States is all freezing, but there are few places we have trees, but the other places, uh, you know, covered by snow pretty much. The snow, so cicadas are, you know, because of cooling, cicadas growth getting slower and slower. So emergence is delayed and delayed, like, you know, 70 years takes 15 years. Nymphs, nymphs is a lab, you know, young ones, juvenile dies because of freezing and starvation. So almost all you know, juveniles dies out. And then when they lucky, you know, looks like lucky adult, it, one came out as adult and then coming out from the soil and then calling like a FIFO, FIFO, but nobody there. So that's a problem. So because of cooling down, everybody, almost everybody dies out. The lucky ones who had a summer sun, good enough to grow, but still unlucky. So what's happened is many of them are unlucky because they don't find mates, but some very lucky ones comes out. Adam and Eve. And then Adam and Eve comes out in the same time, same year, and then almost same days they come out. Then Adam sing calls like a thief, thief, and then nearby, you know, trees, Eve was there, female was there. And then for sure they made. The later I'll talk to you how to mate each other. But then they mate and then lay eggs. Uh, 15 years or 70 years, I don't know. The third many years later, they their children comes out. So most of them are coming out in the same year, but uh, some first grower comes out year advance, some delays. Then what's happened is those comes out earlier and comes out emergent late, they don't find mates either. And then, you know, surroundings and many animals, they are target of those mates, you know, eaten. So what's happened, they cannot make mates. Uh, or they can be eaten by easily and no offspring, no children they can make. So what happens if they comes out in the synchronously, they are advantageous. So the cicadas evolve to switch because of the, you know, maturation by the, you know, those synchronous years, then they come out very, very advantageous. So they switch to cycles and then and then cycles switch cycles and then they decide period with others. So those mutations take place and then spread right away. So then but problem is not only like that. You know not only like that. Once they are fixed with years, so periodicity is fixed. Then second part is when sometimes they, you know, uh, ice age become a little bit warmer, then what happens? They find other cycles, other cicadas in neighborhood. This is, we call refugia, and then refugia is 
refuge is uh, you know something to escape place locations but the refuge is a geological term you know about you know escaping animals and insects and the for trees and historically so those are the, like you know, in the United States, southern part of the United States, they have many refugees and saving trees, you know, insects and animals. And then they survive there with severe weather. And then they spread out again when the, you know, weather warm up, climate warm up. So what's happens in those places, they find other cycles. Because, you know, depending on the north side, south side, east, west, the temperature in the soil is different. So growth is faster in, you know, southern slope with many, many sunlight, you know, la, you know, hot sunlight. Then they can faster. So what's happened is those ones meet each other. There is no difference in appearance only difference in cycles, the hybrid. And then offspring cycles are shifted, then goes to extinction. So <coughs> what's happened with those hybridization? That was a key for prime numbers. But by the way, those refugees, we can say Noah's Ark, no, because animal, all the animals and the insects survives there. And then from the, you know, dinosaurs age, they, they couldn't survive. But then now, you know, mammals, many mammals and you know, plants and the insect, trees and the insects survive in those areas. So, we're going to go for advantage of prime number cycles. There are two advantages. Reality of coemergence, frequency dependent mating. So first, reality of coemergence. Why 13, 17 and 13 year cycles only? So we just assume 10 to 20 year cycles have evolved at first. Every cycle, it you know, each places, and then they start, you know, meeting each other, but how, you know, somehow only 17 and 13 survived, but everybody else is out. Why? They are prime numbers. Why prime number ones among them? We'll show you. Look at, you know, <coughs> Rendezvous cycles, when they eat, meet each other, thinking about 12, 12 to 15 years, if you look at 12 years, they meet with 14 years, 84 year apart. 15 year cycles with 60 years. The same is 14 with 12 is 84 years, 15 to 12 is 60 years apart. But only 13 year cycle is meeting with 12 year cycles, 156 years apart. So these green letters tells you how rare to meet with other cycles, prime numbers advantage. The same is 15, 16, 17, 18, 15 has meeting 80, uh, meet with 18 year cycles with 90 year apart. 16 is 144 years apart. But compared to 90, 144, 17 shortest cycles, 25, 50, 255 years apart. So they are very different. Those green numbers are very high. So isolated. So, uh, so what is prime numbers? Prime numbers are uh, those important thing is 
you know, if the cycles are, you know, how they meet is the cycles. So prime number is not in this areas, does not ever appear in these areas. Those are the prime numbers. So they have to see with other cycles with multiplications with this one and other ones. So that's the essence of prime numbers. So let's try. We have 10 and 20 year cycles with 70 and 30. 10, 20 meets each other. Again, meeting each other. Wow, one year different. 17 was close, but not. 13 was close with 17, but one year late. So no problem. Again, third times they meet each other, 10 and 20. The hybrid is often. So prime numbers are least likely to meet with other cycles. So this is the advantage. The here 14 to 80 year cycles we consider how often they meet with each other, other cycles. This is we considered, we calculated just a bit difficult probably calculations, but we can calculate them. Then so other cycles, one other cycles that we calculated 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 years. Then 14 is 18 times, 16 is 16 times, 15 is 16, 16 is 16 times, 18 is 20 times. But 17 year cycle is only 11 times, much lower than this. The same is two other cycles, means three cycles together, what's going to happen? Three times, three times, three times, four times, 1.8, so less than two. Four other, three other cycles means four cycles together is 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.2. So they are isolated, very much isolated. Same thing is 12 to 15, I just calculated it. The 26, 15, 19, uh, lowest. But it might not work. But if you look at the triple emergence, triple cycle emergence, Three cycle emergence means four, three, three, no, but two. So these are the like how rare those prime number cycles emerge. The coemergence is very, very rare in the southern regions, in 13, in northern regions, 70. Now another things, because they meet, you know, uh, 17 and 13 year cycles are isolated, they don't grow, uh, they don't decrease their numbers by hybridization. But <coughs> other cycles, non-prime numbers, like for 15 years, decrease in numbers. If they have half in numbers, what's going to happen? Wow, 15 only remain one, but 17 is three of them. So that's going to happen, and then those going to be lost, hybridized ones lost. So really, if you are small in numbers, if the cycle is small in numbers, they have disadvantages, really heavily. Like uh, thinking about, you know, if 15 years is only 10%, 17 is 90%. So then 15 year females, how often they mate with 17 and 15. Correct ones 15, but that's only, male is also same numbers. That means male is out of 110, male is correct. So out of 100, 10 male is correct. That means 0.1 ratio. That means probability is, you know, one out of 10 is correct. So that means male can, they can find, 10 female can find 9, 17 cycles, but only one correct one. 
So that means 10 becomes 1. Then, and so decreasing by numbers. Those we call frequency dependent mating. We can say. So uh, the, those are the feedback systems. So those decreasing numbers become highly disadvantageous and then selected out completely. If they are very bad in chance, they cause to zero easily. We have computers, computer cicadas. We treated and computers and we run the simulations, core simulation. We mates, grow, uh, grow, and then nymph grows and then mate each other, and then leave the, them. Just, we just change three parameters. Very, very simple. Nymph survival emergence rates, and a, every year, how much survive. And then when they become adult, how much is successfully. But egg numbers, but egg numbers can be constant. Then we simulated computer cicadas grow. We have 10 computer cycles, cicada cycles. They, those six ones are prime numbers. Certainly 11 is too short to go down, but all three numbers, 13, 17, 19, remaining. And we continue what's going to happen. In this case, it's 17 is only remaining. Two other cycles goes out. So prime numbers are very advantageous. And then this is, you know, we change egg number and survivors and then see who's remaining. These white areas, extinction. These gray areas, many cycles survive. But at the verge of extinction, we have colored areas. Those are the prime number, only prime number survived. So if you look at blue, 17 only survived. Green, seven, 13 is only survived. And we also say, you know, orange ones, 17 and 13 survived. So somewhere here are the condition happened to them in the ice age. The, the, we can see the uh, different parameters set up like this the same thing happened. So um, at the only at the verge of the extinction, they survived by prime, because of prime numbers. So now what is periodical now afterward? Uh, we also did simulation the differently. In this cases, we put, you know, 100, individuals goes down, then they you know, we eliminate it. And then in control experiments, we call, like, you know, no elimination. Then what's happening is real numbers, so decimals, we have, we put the decimals in here, then everybody survived. But the, if you use 100, you know, we use decimals, but we still see if population size goes down 100, then we kept we, we set zero if we have few numbers, because few numbers are likely to extinct. Then only prime numbers survive. That's what we can see. So it's because small numbers are almost likely to extinct. Then we have control experiments, everybody survives, but clearly this white area is sub extinctions and the verge of extinction, all the prime number comes out. So this is what happened to cicadas, that we guess. So afterward, you know, ice age gone. Now, nowadays, we have all extinct, but except 17 and 13 cycles. Now we cannot go back because one year advance or delay, no mates. Dispersal going out of the areas, we have no mates. So they are kind of dead end. They cannot move back. So we have 
ice age so many times. And then the, our estimation is close to the end, somewhere around the end, we have evolved. So now in the city of the USA, cicadas are waiting to come out. I already come out now. And then, so this is a small story of Adam and Eve. Yeah, Genesis of Peruca cicadas. Peruca cicado is one of the rider of Noah's Ark. So cicado story is down here. Then we're gonna go to next part. Oh, the, we do study real cicadas, we collected them. Oh, it's in partly in Japanese, but the, sorry for that. We couldn't find in the English version, but the, we have big ones, three species, you know, 17 and 13, oh, 17 year cycles, and the 13 year cycles, 17 and 13. We have the, you know, simultaneously 17 and 13 is evolved in three lines. The cure is just, you know, ones banded, skinny ones, the black berry ones, and the big ones, all simultaneously should have evolved. That we found. And then our group of molecular biology group consists of the Japanese groups and, you know, American groups too. Like uh, uh, Chris Simon is the leader of the whole group cicada groups for years, I joined as a Japanese, you know, leader. And then the Teiji is molecular leader of the this true. So we all have, but among them, we just say, John Cooley and Dave Marshall are the discoverer of our demos, the, you know, cicada, mating behaviors. So we're going to go to movie demos of how to catch cicadas. Like, you know, so John and Dave find the genius technique to collect cicadas. Actually, he, they both collected those cicadas by those technique. I'll show you. Uh, no, the, this is the demos. We're going to escape. Now, wait a minute. So, you see the cicada singing? <laughs> On the hand, cicadas are listening to the hand scratch. So again, there's a female model for the male has the white symbol. Male is chasing hand scratch. There are some cicadas that have lost the symbol completely, and they're common in the western states. And right now, even though they're fighting them, instead of hand scratch, now electric switch is easy. This one's interference buzzing. Yes, yes. So male cicada is listening. The electric seeds or hunting. Now we're going to have trouble. So, this is what they found. Now, oh, we're going to go back, to, go to cicadas. Wait a minute. Now the we're gonna show cicadas. Ah. Mm. Is that okay? Like a, you can see my screen. Um, right now we can only see your um, your face, okay. you know, your video, and then you'll have to okay. share. Oh, good. I'll oh, show you the some of my samples of cicadas like this. These are the collected for all seven cicadas, but they, compared to Japanese cicadas, quite small. And then they 
they are now probably mating stage and with core sound. And also we show you that like a, if we want to study like something like this, we are studying all the time. The those are like you know like a only possible those mating behavior become only possible with those huge numbers are singing, singing and mating each other. Then Dave and John found how they mate each other. So cicadas singing on the tree top, those are males. And the females are flying down to the trees, the you know, lower part of the trees. Then what they happen is they click wings, click wings. Then, so wing click is like a flip, like this. They make sounds, any kind of clicking sounds. We have now electric switches, you know, sounds. Any kind of clicking sounds, sounds like females. So males listen to those clicking sounds after they sing, like a, you know, magic the septendation called FIFO. So FIFO, 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 then, they think, oh, female comes. My my mate comes, go down and then go flying down, coming down, jumping down, down, down. Then next to the flipping sound, that's what they found. Then they try to mate with, even with switches, even with these switches, they try to mate. They don't care about humans in those stages. So they come down. Then they meet each other with switches sometimes. And so now what Dave and John did, they use switches. They, they listen to the calls, singing of those cicadas, they flip switches. Then in the below, you know, on the ground, you know, standing up, then switches, then Top of the trees, those cicadas, males coming down onto their hands. So peruca cicadas are easy to collect like that, but all other cicadas using the same flipping sound, clicking sound. So if you use these clicking sounds, switches or even, you may call any cicadas from top of the trees. It's very difficult to get onto hands except those peruca cicadas, but still you can bring down all these cicadas close to a few feet apart on the trees. Then you can use the nets to collect it. So really, you know, those John and Dave start collecting many cicadas which are known to be considered to be very rare they can use those flipping sounds or sometimes recording the song and with flipping sounds together and then calling down all these cicadas to collect those who consider to be very rare cicadas, they could collect a lot. So really, it's a new way of collecting cicadas. You need only just electric switch or something like that, or even the hand flipping sound like this. That's what they found. So nowadays, cicadas are singing like a, uh, nowadays cicadas are singing. So like, you know, right now emergence going on. The many, so some people are from not from the United States, so we show you emergence right now it's going like this. This is early emergence. So one of the this number. And so huge numbers. 
Let's try to. Then, like, you know, they, oh, this is the R. I don't know, I don't know. So you can see those scales. The camera, that was. The margins. That's also late, uh, very rare. But also, you know, you can see the same way. Usually, they, they come top of the trees. And, uh, on the leaves, they're hanging everywhere like this. So that's what happened. Now, after a few days, what's going to happen is this. I'm not sure right now to see this is our right. but this one I So these are the cicadas coming out. Mm. Mm. So this is my story of cicadas. Now we can move on to the uh, uh, question time. So Peyoke cicadas are originated in the ice age and like Adam and Eve in you know riding on the Noah's Ark the Peoria Cicado right ancestors riding on but then they evolve to periodicity 17 17 year cycles that's what I guess so this is we cannot prove because we don't know past so this is my science fiction story thank you very much and then we like to move on to next. So, yes, thank you so much, Yoshimura Sensei. That was wonderful, um, and thank you for for taking questions. Um, now, you and I discussed this. I want to tell the audience. Um, so first, we actually solicited some questions from some curious children in the DC area, and they sent in some uh, some videos. So with your kind indulgence, I'd like to play one of those videos right now. Yeah, go ahead. Thank you. Is voice there? Oh, can you not hear it? No. Try again. Or what the other question? Can the does can the does where what does the does drink out of? Or what thing? The cicada can fight by herself. What drink? What do they drink? Field water, any water, what water? Oh, cicadas, even adults, drink waters from trees. So tree always in the in the nymphs, in the juvenile, baby cicadas always drink the waters from tree roots. So tree roots pull out the waters for their growth. So they have the water pipe in the, you know, <coughs> root 
inside mm. the room. Mm -hmm. They put the water pipe, mouth into the water pipe, and then, you know, share the water from the tree. And then that's not much damage. But then adult, you know, also needs water. They put the, those strong mouths into the water, uh, the trees, get waters out of it. But the water from the tree is from the roots coming out. So they have some minerals, but not much nutrients. So that's why they grow slow. Is that right? Yes, thank you so much. Um, the second question actually will uh, come to you in Japanese, but I will uh, translate for the audience. So let me bring that up briefly. Here we are. So, uh, what Reina Tan just asked was, um, why do the nymphs, the, uh, the, the baby cicadas, why do they crawl to trees when there are so many birds in the trees and the birds might come down and eat them? Yeah, but like, you know, the cicadas have to mate each other and lay eggs. So, so even though it's dangerous, they have to climb the trees to sing. For, for males, we have to sing. Female, to find the mates, they have to go on the trees and fly to the trees too. And um, without mating, without laying eggs, they cannot make children. So it's dangerous. But if you think about all, you know, not the periodical cicadas, all the other cicadas, they come out in the evening and then climb trees in the dark. Then when they, you know, are actually able to fly, you know, even the early morning, they may be able to fly. They can escape from birds. That's why they come out all other cicadas come out in the evening, late in the evening, yeah, when they get, when the, you know, a daylight goes down. But the only periodical cicadas come out in daytime. Why? Because numbers. They have so many cicadas now, but has never eaten them all. They can only you know, eat a small amount. So danger is very, very low. Is that understandable? Definitely. The only thing, yeah, the only thing that we know, but we don't know why they, you know, move, walk toward trees, stem, tree trunks. It's another question. We have no idea. Only guess is they have information, you know, they have knowledge about water directions in the roots or something. We don't know. So we have. Well, that, that would be very interesting because it would connect our two children's questions. That's uh, th there would be a relationship between the water and the and the uh, the walking toward the tree. That's really interesting. Yeah, that's my guess. Why would you guess? Great, thanks. Um, and now we can move on to the other uh, questions from our audience tonight. Um, and the first one is from Sima, who also said, this is fantastic. So uh, we've, we've got a fan in the audience. Um, and Sima wanted uh, you, Sensei, to uh, maybe speak a little bit more about the um, advantage of one cycle to not meet another cycle. Right. Basically, Sima says, um, wouldn't, you know, two cycles meeting up increase the mating chances? But you showed that the numbers actually decrease because of the uh, the the imbalance in mating. Oh, the the reason for meeting with other cycles, they meet with, you know, like, a, for example, 
15 and 18 year cycles meet each other, how their offspring becomes? Because hybridized offspring are like, you know, maybe, you know, 15, uh, 16 years and 18 years meet, then hybridizing offspring become 16 years, emerging in 16 years, in the same next generation, the children, next children. But then those 18 year cycles, you know, genes meet with other hybridizations, then next time is 18 years. That means after 16 years, after previous 18 years. So really hybridizations makes children's off cycle from ancestral cycles, then in the small numbers, only in the small numbers. So hybridization makes out of cycles or from other parents. So Great. The, parents is the same, but the mm -hmm. offspring become different. Um, it, it was uh, quite a coincidence. Our second question was basically, can uh, can a hybridization occur with 15 and 17 to make 16? And you just answered that. So we'll call that a double question. Yeah, um, and uh, actually I have to say, we don't know. Maybe 15 and 17 become 16. We don't know. But uh, our guess is 15 and 17 becomes 15 year cycle in the beginning, but then those hybrid hybrid ones made each other, then 15 genes, 15 genes, sometimes 15, 17, eight, 17 genes, 17 genes, maybe 15 and 17 genes. So coming together. And then, you know, the, you know, uh, we have the clock with alarms in the morning. We set up 15, at the eight o'clock or you know seven o'clock and eight o'clock who works first is seven o'clock works first so we have we believe i believe you know 15 year clock and the 17 year clock the 15 year first work then 17 year is neglected that's what we guess ah uh. And I see the, the genetics, the, the Mendelian inheritance can be a little bit unpredictable, right? So it's it's also the, the hybridization yes. is, is very chaotic. Thank you. Um, I'll, I'll move on to the next question then from Lucas. Um, Lucas asks about the uh, the clicking sound, right? For the, uh, yeah. you know, for, for attracting skills. Yeah. Does the clicking sound collection technique only yeah. work for periodical cicadas or does it no. work for annual cicadas? Or almost all cicadas. The, actually in Japan, we collected, you know, core cicadas, many different species of cicadas coming down to the, you know, lower part of the trees, just a, a meter, you know, couple of feet away. So we can use them. We can use this bring to the field and then calling down cicadas and then calling female cicadas around. Actually, right. you can use it. <laughs> it's so interesting. Yeah, because, um, you know, clicking sound has no characteristics, just a clicking. Right. Even the hand clicking is working. Um, and actually, our, our next question from Sharon, uh, speaking of clicking, yeah. does the artificial clicking um, interrupt the male's quest for future mating? Does that make it difficult for, for males to mate after they hear your artificial clicking? It doesn't matter because males, you know, fail to mate, then go for another male and another female. It doesn't matter the, because clicking sound has no characteristic. Mm. So they fail, they go for, you know, if you, you know, if you're in love with our girl and then lost love, then a <laughs> few, few hours, few years, maybe few days later, the, you go for another girl. <laughs> so they we came. We came for a sci-fi story, and then you gave us a romance story as well. <laughs> yes. Okay. Uh, next is from Dr. Nao from uh, the NIH um, and Keisho Center in here in Washington. Um, Dr. Nao asks, 
do females click in response to uh, to male sounds in terms of timing? Yes. And then the peruca cicada is easy to timing. They, they can click almost any time after male singing. So the large ones cause fee for then click, fee for click. So just right after. But the uh, small ones call G, G, then it's, you know, almost any time. So, but Japanese cicadas or other cicadas, we don't know the timing. So if we know the timing, we may be able to bring down very precisely. And then Australian cicadas, some of very rare, considered to be very rare cicadas, call male calls, chichi, 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 very short period to calls. And the clicking sound have to be in between. Then we put the, those record, those Dave and Jones, bringing down many cicadas of that species. So <laughs> timing is important. That's so interesting. So now we've had a sci-fi story, a romance, and a musical. Yeah. So <laughs> um, we have another question from Sima uh, about yeah. the uh, the clicks, right? So using the click to catch cicadas, uh, you'll you'll catch only males. How do you collect female samples? Oh, actually, clicking sounds and then call sounds and clicking sounds together. Oh, they have meetings. That means I can join. So female comes to. <laughs> <laughs> Great. So actually, you can collect females too. That's so and then Dave and John collect both males and females. And then John, you know, show me how to sing male song too. <laughs> so you can imitate male song too. Oh, okay. So if you really want to collect females, you can also make things yeah, specifically for that. Yeah, too. <laughs> um, next question is from Peter. Peter yeah. says, thank you for the excellent presentation. How do cicadas know when it is time to emerge, right? How do they judge the passage of time? Uh, the uh, the Peruca cicadas is actually counting years by some ways. We don't know yet. But the timing of the season, we still have no idea how they decide. They are looking at making a hole and looking at outside in the, you know with a cap and the open up cap and looking at then one day they start coming out together we have no idea so that's another question we have to answer further mysteries yeah and then it's similar to the you know the uh, many many uh, animals in the ocean like a sea urchin or shells and things, they, you know, synchronize very well. And the moon cycle is important or something they say, but still we don't know the exact mechanisms, how to recognize, how to release sperms and eggs in the simultaneously. We have no ideas. The same way, we have mm. no ideas how to synchronize together. That's good. Well, that's, uh, that requires future research. I love it. Yes. The next question from Ren is in Japanese, so I'll read it to you first and then I'll translate it for the audience. Yeah. So Ren says, Osu wa ki no ue de ooki na oto de naku no ni, dou yate mesu no kriku no oto ni ki ga tsuku no desu ka? Which means the if the the males are uh, up in the trees singing and you know making that loud racket, how do they recognize, how do they uh, even hear the the click of the females that your um, device replicates? Yeah, female comes just underneath the, you know, male's song, you know, he, like in down part of the trees, branches, then they make a click sound and the click sounds are actually able to listen very well. Like, you know, you see, This sounds, you know, carried out pretty long. So as long as they are, you know, clicking underneath the trees, male, male are listen to those click sounds only. 
So they concentrate on clicking, you know, ignoring other sounds. That's why they can listen. And actually, when we collect, you know, put cicadas on the hands, I, we clicking is like this. It's not, it's it's not switching like this. It's even this. This is enough. For me, for us, for humans, maybe this is really sounds, but for cicadas, females are called, you know, you know, they have made, girls are calling. How can they resist? They are listened to. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, it, it reminds me of like the point and counterpoint in jazz. Yeah. So let's see, uh, next question is from Mary Beth. Yeah. Who asks, if glaciation is a key driver for evolution of periodical cicadas, Yes. How come periodical cicadas did not evolve in other areas of the world that were glaciated? Why only in the eastern United States? The eastern United States is, you know, refugee, many refugees and many animals survived there. So, like a Noah's Ark, it's a Noah's Ark there, many animals. But the, for cicadas, it's a severe Noah's Ark, so verge of extinction. So they, if I, they have to evolve them to survive it. But if you think about European countries, you know, the cicadas are, you know, mostly tropical origins and they go back and forth. But when we have glaciers, many of the insects actually dies out in north. But the tropical insects now have to go over Saharan desert Mediterranean Sea, Alps Pyrenees, Dover to go to England. So that's the reason very few insects in England. The same is very few trees in the England species, tree species. The, <coughs> if you go to Japan, Japan is south and north and then high elevations too. So, you know, they move gradually goes north and south. And then they also go up to the up uh, mountains and go down the mountain. So they can move, escape from those freezing locations gradually, but only in the United States. If you go down, you face the Caribbean Sea. You cannot go into the water. So they're trapped. So they have to be trapped to evolve. Is that right? Great. Thank you. That's a that's a very complete response. Thank you. Let's see. Um, ah, another question from Lucas. Uh, are you okay to to continue with questions? Yes. Yes. No oh, problem. Thank you. Okay. Lucas asks. The 17-year brood X is smaller than the cicadas I saw in Japan, just like you showed with, with your um, yeah. collection. I was surprised to see that. Is it possible that the length of time in the ground relates to their size? Or is there another reason for size differences? Oh, uh, like, uh, certainly, like, you know, uh, the, uh, most of the cicadas, uh, the bigger cicadas, are uh, just, you know, growing in south, or if they grow in north, they have the large, uh, longer ears inside, you know, to grow. So, you know, growth is depending on temperature and uh, how much water tree gain, you know. So, really, growth is related, and the 17 years is good enough to grow to certain size, pretty much. But the, you know, in the ice age, they may be very enough. We don't know because ice age, we, we can never experience ice age. But the, the you know, those cicadas, are, you know, took at least 17 years to grow to their size, correct size. Nowadays, it's very warm. So they're actually finishing growth by the, you know, sometimes 11 years, 12 years, and then waiting for another six, seven years. 
in the ground. <laughs> so <laughs> it all depends. But the you know, size of the cicadas depending on the size of uh, the depending on species, species, you know, they have uh, definite ranges of size. Like uh, Japanese cicadas, like uh, Min Min cicadas, they're big. But the Japanese Chichi cicadas, they're very small, smaller than Periwinkle cicadas. <laughs> so it's depending on the species. Is that right? Mm. Okay, uh, let's see. Next question is from Nagashima-san. Yeah. After a brood X year, is there any indication of increase in the number of birds or predators? Oh, that's a good question. Certainly, you know, after cicadas comes out, we don't know, we have no record, but we guess, you know, cicadas are good food of birds, good food of squirrels, and good food of snakes. When I, <laughs> you know, collect cicadas, you know, those emergence in the, like, you know, parks, we also found many snakes, many squirrels eating cicadas. And the snakes we never really see in the field, but we saw snakes many times you know, walking around in the park, you know, <laughs> you know, crawling around, we should say, in the park, big snakes. They are actually, they're definitely eating cicadas. So, you know, those are the growing ears for those animals. And then the similar thing happened to what they call a bamboo. Bamboo, you know, is periodical. Like, you know, longer ones, 16, 60 years apart or 120 years apart. That's the longest. But then bamboo tree flowers, all bamboo died out afterward. But bamboo seed is very nutritious. Like, you know, bamboo seed is like a rice, but it's very nutritious. And then Mouse grows so much them, the next year disaster, food, no food. And then many bum, many mice, you know, running around. And then those are the ones sometimes, you know, we have observation of mouse running into the sea or something. So those things are the phenomena after bamboo flowers. The same thing, you know, feeding makes very much food for that year, but the next year they have starvation. Right? Great, thanks. Yeah, that, that's an interesting comparison. So, sorry, I was looking at the next question. It's, it's very scientific, so. Um, that's okay. It's from uh, Jonathan Wilkin. He asks, uh, the phylogeny chart seemed to suggest that the splitting of 13 and 17 years uh, occurred independently among the spatially separate, closely related populations. So despite being far apart, they all, uh, they, they all developed the same 13 and 17 year cycles. Is, is that correct? Probably true. Uh, the, because the cicadas, like, you know, those insect group have the certain, like, you know, system, genetic systems. So they have only choices to grow to cycles. Then this, they should have evolved 13 and 17 years simultaneously in different locations. But on different refugia, they may evolve to 13 or, or, you know, or certain years, or, like, you know, ten, become tense brood like 10 brood right now, or 12 brood or 13 brood. You know, so they have the same 17 year cycles, but in different refugia, they may evolve to different emergence, different brood. We don't know. We are trying to, you know, study the genetics, molecular genetics of these details to, you know, 
trace down the history of brood that we are trying now. Mm. So really, we don't know yet. I see. But simultaneously, they should have evolved. Right. If it's evolutionarily advantageous somewhere, then it should be evolutionary advantageous everywhere. And for everywhere for all three three groups of species. Right. Thanks. OK, we've got time for a few more questions. Are, is it OK to continue a little yes. bit? Yeah, sure. Thanks. OK, um, our next question is from Kylie London. Yeah. Who asks, do the cicadas as we see them today in appearance look precisely like their ancestors? Mm, yeah, pretty much the, they don't. Uh, they should have, most of them uh, should have evolved before, you know, dinosaur age. So, and the, we only have very few records, but still, you know, dinosaur, early dinosaur age, we have a wing, you know, indentation. So they, they don't change. There may be more species now, especially in, you know, Japan, because of, you know, ice ages, they may split and, you know, making new species more and more. But the, other than that, the appearance doesn't change so much, but there may be sm small evolutions. But all the cicadas, slightly, the old cicadas uh, and the new cicadas are slightly different. That's true. Hmm. And so yeah. divergence occurred probably in Ice Age, too. Oh, well, uh, that's a coincidence. Our next question, <clears throat> it's anonymous, but the question is, would you expect the 13-year and 17-year broods of the same species to diverge into separate species because of the lack of gene flow? The, certainly that's true, but the 13 and the 17 years, we have questioned the we couldn't find the genetic records of the like, you know, cross mating between 13 and 17 yet. But the, you know, the, my, many of my colleagues couldn't find it. But the, the, my simulation shows, you know, 13 year genes can be put into 17 year cycles. And then 17 year cycles completely switch to seven, 13 year cycles. And then seemingly one of the species, Majuska the Neotredation, might have happened that way. And then if we, when we do gene sequencing, uh, you know, then we find common genes between 13 and 17 cycles, so much common genes. So unexpectedly common genes. So that means they still have, even now, they have, you know, uh, eventual, you know, cross hybridizations or carry over. So that's what we are guessing. So the, the isolation is not 100% because emergence is the same year they can hybridize. The only thing is they have to live together, but we are mixing so much of the now in, like mm. if you look at Washington DC, we have many broods because Probably because we bring trees from other places so often. It yes. comes with juveniles. Mm -hmm. Those trees come with juveniles. Okay. And I, I mean, I understand, of course, you know, we have not had genetic, uh, you know, tracking technology for for a very long time. So, of course, we, we don't know, you know, from the last time that they uh, emerged, you know, simultaneously. We, we can't know if it was... So, well, I, I'm sure in the future we'll know a whole lot more with, uh, with yeah. genetic testing. Uh, our next question is from Huge Sun. Yeah. <clears throat> um, let's see, he's got two questions. So the first question, um, we understand that uh, cicadas have good hearing, but what about their eyes? How much can they see? Mm, certainly they can see, for sure. If you, you know, uh, certainly uh, the Veruca cicada, you can, you know, correct by nets easily, but other cicadas, 
like、uh, some of the cicadas in Japan, if you try to get close to the tree, they recognize right away. And then they fly away. But, but the, so both visions and hearings are very good in cicadas. Should be especially like, you know, many insects, you know, those with insects has different eyes, you know, complex eyes, complex eyes. I'm not sure the, how to call it. many, you know, focus, focus eyes, different from Jap a human. And then they are good to detect movement. They're co considered to be good to detect movement. So our movement can be easily detected by these eyes. That's what I guess. I think you're right. I think they are called complex eyes in, in English. I think、yeah. you were right about that.、Um, What's the next one? Next one. <laughs>、um, Anonymous asks,、uh, how, do, how do male cicadas know which female clicked? Like when, when they hear a click, how do they know which female was the one that clicked? And how does the female know which male sang to her? Oh, actually, the reason is very good. So, actually, when male is singing, and then right, you know, time, right timing, female click, then that was the male's listening to. So, then the male moved down, and then sing, click, sing, click, and then those. Communications they do until they meet each other. And then, strangely, or surprisingly, when they mate, they don't use eyes. They use only female clicking sounds and male sing for the mating behavior. They ignore completely eyes. Right, because it's back to back, they can't see each other, right? Yeah, back to back or in, in the. Forage, leaves so many, so you may not be able to see each other. So they ignore eyes. That's why they can meet with those these switches. These switches they can mate because they ignore visions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they meet with these holes. Oh, that's convenient. So,、um, let's see, do, do we have time for maybe two more questions? Sure, sure. No problem. Okay, we, we have so many more, but I, I guess we'll have、oh, to. We have more, but, you know, not for, forever, but、right. we have couple, <laughs> three, four more. Okay. So,、uh, let's see, the next question, also anonymous.、Um, how do entomologists know that the cicadas that emerge from the ground are the same or the same brood? Or, you know, from the, the ones that burrowed into the ground 17 years ago. How do they know that, it, that one cicada is the same as the one from 17 years ago? Oh, we have the record of where, you know, cicadas out in certain years, but only by locations. So, by mistake, if they moved around, we have no way. And then, Like, for example, collected cicadas. We only we need the date year of, year of corrections to know which brood. There is no other indications. Appearance looks the same. So the correction years is only locations, and the correction years is important. Otherwise, we can't. <laughs> yeah, that's,、uh, that's very detailed work. Yeah,、um, like a Cape Cod Saturn Forest comes out, you know, like five, six years ago. Then, if you go back to the same forest, you can hear in 17 years later. That's only the indication. But、uh, six years later, nobody there. <laughs> okay.、Uh, actually, oh, the next question is、uh, the second question from Higuchi san. Yeah.、Um, he asks In Washington, D.C., there are many construction sites these days. 
yeah. um, and many areas are being paved with asphalt. And uh, he says, I'm afraid that cicadas will not be able to emerge in the future because of all the construction. How much uh, does urban development affect or damage the cycle of cicadas? Oh, the thing is, you know, pavement. Certainly, if you put pavement, you know, after they go down the, you know, ground, then the, the cicadas may not be able to come out from the soil. But the, if you think about gardens, backyards, do they pave all the gardens, cut trees and things? They don't. Always there are places cicadas go underground and suck waters from the trees and then grow and then come out. You know, if we cut all the trees in Washington DC and then if you pave all the ground, even the backyard, then they may die out. But we don't. Probably. <laughs> so they will survive. Is that Thanks. Right? Yeah, and uh, you know, the next question is related. Um, Kobayashi-san asks, how is global warming affecting the periodic cycle? Or do you think it could affect uh, cicadas in the future? Yeah, that's the very question because the, we still see a lot of cicadas going, certainly going, you know, up and up. And then because the, the warming makes, you know, cicadas easy, so the density goes up and up. But they, like pretty well they are adapted. <laughs> so we see, you know, some places cicadas going down certainly, but some places pretty much going up too. So unless we destroy all the habitats, they are pretty safe. So we don't know. The, but the, because 17 year cycles and 13 year cycles are definite. So they don't change cycles. They don't get longer. So they come out in easily because their growth is guaranteed pretty well with global warming. Is that right? Okay. Well, thanks. That's uh, that's a good place to leave it. We we know the future of cicadas is more or less okay. Um, and I see it's 8.30, so uh, I would just like to say thank you so much, Dr. Yoshimura. And yeah. um, I mean, I, I'd like to ask you to, to come back and give us another talk, and I hope that you can yeah. do it before 17 years. <laughs> yes. <laughs> if I'm surviving, <laughs> if I'm still alive. Well, we'll probably talk about cicadas much sooner than that. So please do come back again. And thank you so much for your brilliant talk tonight. Yeah, thank you very much for everybody listening to my, you know, science, science fiction. <laughs> <laughs> we very much appreciate it. OK, well, from all of us here at the JICC, we're signing off. Good night, everyone. Good night. Bye-bye.